Hello and welcome back to the Rocket League Map Make Tutorial Series. This is episode 6. We're going to talk about the Kismet Basics. Uh, episodes 6 through 12 are all going to be Kismet. We're going to be talking about how to do just a ton of stuff with Kismet. And I'll also this episode is probably pretty long, or going to be pretty long, and I'm just going to be going over the, the basic layout of Kismet and how to use it. Let's open Kismet by just hitting this K. And then it might open in the bottom or it might open up here. And here we go. We have Kismet open. So right now it's a lot of nothing. It just has the zero one background with uh, the box. You can't add anything outside of the box. It'll say it's an invalid, not a valid location. You have to stay in the box. But let's go over these buttons. So these two buttons are both for uh, subsequences, which I will talk about. So if actually, let's just do this right now. Let's create a new subsequence. So what we're going to do is we're going to right right click and you'll get this menu option. And we're going to do create new sequence and this is a subsequence. So let's name it, I don't know, flopper, flooper. Okay, fine. It's good enough. So in a subsequence, you can put other nodes. So if I want to teleport something and I'll go over how to go to nodes and everything. Basically, let's say I want to teleport something. This one's pretty simple to understand. I want to open the parent sequence. I hit this button and it brings us back to the parent sequence. So if I add another subsequence instead of here and name it flooper2, open that. I open the parent sequence again. It'll open flooper. And if I do it again, it opens. It basically, you could see down here in sequences, you can see the hierarchy of everything. And if you don't see this, go to window and click on sequences. It it will probably open down here on the bottom. Um, I put mine up here because I find it simpler to read. A, a, some of the nodes will have a lot of options. I like to just see everything at once. This is zoom to fit. So if I create a node, so let's do teleport again. So if I go over here, zoom to fit, it'll bring me to whatever node I have selected. These two buttons, I don't use connectors. So if none of the connectors are being used, you hit it. It gets rid of all of the connectors because there's nothing here. So now it just says teleport. And if I show all connectors, it will show everything back again. So if I create an object variable, so now this is a used connector. If I hit hide used, it'll just show the target now. And then we can bring it back, shows everything again. New sequence object. So this is very, uh, very useful if you know exactly what you're looking for. So let's say I want to do text, but I don't, I don't want to find it through the through these options because there are a lot of, you know, folders inside of folders. Basically, is what this is. So if I just want to find where it is, I could just type text. Oh, it's right there. Draw text. Create. Right there, we have a draw text node. The search tool. So let's say I want to find. So if I'm working over here on something for some reason, I want to find the use of text, uh, comments and names. Search. You can see draw text. Oh, that's where I use it, and it'll highlight it for you. Update list is a button which I don't really know what to do. I have never used this button. So uh, there you go. That's what I know about it. Open new window. This will just open another Kismet window. So now there's two Kismet windows. So here's our second window right here. And I also don't know what clear all breakpoints button does. So, um, you know, those are the two buttons I've like never had to use ever for any reason. So there you go. I don't know what those buttons do. If you can find them out, put them in the comment section. I know people would love to see it. But first I want to talk about the Kismet reference. The Kismet reference is in the episode six links. It is a reference and it shows you what every single node does. So let's say you wanna know what the teleport does. You don't know what it does right here. It causes the targeted actors to be relocated to the destination actor. And then update rotation. If checked, the rotation of the target actors will be set to that of the destination's actor upon teleportation. This is basically very fancy. It's gonna be very fancy explanations of everything, but it will explain everything. So the target, the target actors to teleport, that's the actor to use the destination to, to teleport to. 
and it has this for every single one. The only one it doesn't have is for TA game nodes, which is strictly psionics. So only they know the documentation basically of it, all of that stuff. Another thing is the Kismet user guide. This is not yet in the episode 6 link, so I've just found this. But it will show you... Um, it will show you everything all the buttons do. So here you go. That's what the arrow does, apparently. It doesn't show you what clear all breakpoints does, so there you go. But it'll explain everything in here, all of the hotkeys, keyboard, mouse controls, everything in here. Uh, it'll show you the types of sequences, objects, the event, actions, conditions, variables, examples, and stuff like that. So this is a very good thing to look at. Let's uh, let's actually do some kismet right here. Just very simple to help you understand a grasp of what's going on. So let's uh, let's delete flooper. And once we delete flooper, delete all the subsequences. And you can see on the left here, it shows you the number of nodes. There's nothing here. Let's create a trigger volume. For trigger volumes, uh, you just use the brushes. So we find this here, make it a cube Go over here, scale it up and make sure it's in the floor so we can easily hit it. And we can move it. You can also use these to move it however you want. That's good. Yeah, I'm just gonna make this trigger volume. And I'm going to duplicate it up here. And there we go. So, next, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so once we touch this volume, after a few seconds, it's going to drop a ball from up here into this square, which is going to make it go over here. So, First thing I want to do is I'm going to add path nodes. So path nodes are how you can set a destination very easily. If I add a path node, move it up. Now it's above the trigger volume. That'll make it so the ball spawns above the trigger volume. And then we can move another path node down here. And I'm duplicating by hitting alt click. I've already gone over that in previous episodes. So let's do this relatively quickly because I don't want this episode to take forever. Basically, you want to make it so when you touch this trigger, it will add the ball. So let's go, let's select the trigger volume, right click, do event using trigger volume, touch. And then right here, there's a lot of things over here. Let's go over the class proximity type first. Class proximity type is what can touch it in order for it to activate. So a pawn means the ball and car can touch it. Vehicle underscore TA means only ball or only car. Ball underscore TA means only ball. So let's make it. So we're going to use the actual ball that's going to spawn. So ball underscore TA. And then we're going to change the match trigger count and retrigger delay to zero, zero. Means it's going to go an infinite amount of times. And then we're going to deselect player only and select client side. Um, player only because we're going to deselect because it's not a player, it's a ball. And client side is better for syncing things. So that's why I just always select that. And then I want to teleport this ball up here. I said I was gonna add it, but uh, you know, actually, maybe I'll destroy it and add a new one. Okay, so once the ball touches it, we're gonna destroy the ball. So, in order to destroy the ball, we're gonna go new action, get a game, explode game ball, and remove that to blue and orange. And you could do it to none. Basically, whenever it will destroy whatever ball touches the trigger volume or whatever one was spawned last. So since it's the only one in the game, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to do Explode Game Ball. And then we want to add a ball at this path node. So after so after it explodes the game ball, I'm going to make a delay. So you can go to Miscellaneous and Delay, or you could hit D left click, and it will automatically create one for you. So we're going to create a delay, so it'll happen after, I don't know, two seconds? Sure. And then New Action, Be a Game add game ball and then we're going to do that and so after the delay is finished it's going to add the game ball and the add game ball node is very tricky so for the instigator you're going to make it so it's player zero and to make that you can go to variable player player just like that or you can hit p and left click and you'll create it the spawn transform so that's the path node we want it to spawn there so that's what we're going to do with that 
And then let's make it actually, let's delete this trigger volume. Let's make it so after a second, it moves the ball over here. So after the ball is added, we're going to move a delay of 1.5 seconds. After it's added, start the delay. And then after a second, we want to actor set actor location. So we want the set actor location. For the location, it's going to be the path node. So you can right click and new object using vary path node, or you can right click on the node and new object variable and it automatically connect it for you. So the location is going to be um, this path node. It will conserve all momentum. So we want to stop the momentum. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click action actor set velocity after it says the location. Actually, no, we're going to yeah, after it says location, we want to set the velocity zero. And then we need the target. What, what's it going to target? It's going to target the spawned ball. So in order to control the ball, you can hit right click, right click on this new object variable and it'll create, let's delete the old one. It'll create an object variable. So basically it will show up as question marks because it is a, it's an object variable that isn't, it's hard to explain. It will show up as question marks after, so the spawn ball will show up as that. It will set the actual location of the ball and then set the velocity to zero. So it will stop it. And that should be good. So what's going to happen just to reiterate after you touch the trigger, it's going to explode the ball. After you touch the ball with the trigger, it's going to explode the ball. After two seconds, it's going to add the ball up here. After 1.5 seconds, it's going to set the location of the ball here and stop it from moving for a second. So let's go in game so you can see what this looks like. All right, so we're now in game. Let's uh, make sure we have it as Utopia. So let's make Tutorial Series version two, drag it over the Utopia override. And there we go. Play, custom games, private match, create land match, create match. I've done that a ton of times, so I know all the clicks, but I explained how to do it in a previous video, so I don't think I need to explain. The shrine blue. Spawn. You might notice this map already, as we've we've experimented on it a lot. So let's hit the ball over here. So you might notice that you can't see the trigger, and it's supposed to be like that. So let's throw the ball over there, and after a second, it adds the ball, sets the actual location over here, and stops this momentum. And so it just drops nicely. So if we do that again, so since we said to do it an infinite amount of times, we can just keep doing it. So it gets rid of the ball, adds the ball, location, and it just drops. So, one more time. Ball, teleports. So, that's it. And obviously, the since we didn't touch this, the goal still works. But that's going to be it for this episode. I have gone over everything I want to go over. Uh, in the next episodes, I'll be going into specific things that you can do with Kismet. So it'll be more targeted rather than just, you know, making a ball teleport. So I will see you in the next episode.